this network. Welcome to Bury the Needle, episode six. We're sitting here with Rocco. This girl just offered up her OnlyFans. <laughs> and that's Oliver in the ink cam. He's in the middle okay, so of the So you guys understand now. that what Oliver's got going on here has nothing to do with us. Yeah. You know, we, those girls should have masks on during this pandemic, but that's Oliver for you. That's. <laughs> <laughs> One day you guys will understand that these things that uh, are killing people in the world actually kill people. Okay, so. What's up, Micah, in the chat? Micah's joining us. Micah! Yeah. <laughs> Shout out okay. to your mom and dad. <laughs> you know what, Malcolm? I guess there's no way of shutting those two broads up without sticking our cocks in their mouths, eh? <laughs> right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Come on, look at Oliver. He's got all his guys' hair slicked back. He's got cologne on today. Yeah, we've got that nice you know what? On. We got this actually, guys. This is all one big thing we got going on because today we're talking about scratchers, and this is little reenactments that we're doing at the shop, you know, showing what can happen in a shop. Uh, of course, women and a tattoo machine. So, we want you guys to understand on full hand, we're putting this on for you so you guys understand exactly. Oliver actually has nothing. You can see that the Machine's not even plugged in, so and the water there, you know, it's all wrong. So we're gonna talk about scratchers, okay? Yeah. <laughs> What's up, Malcolm? What's up? <laughs> hey? What? what? Look at that smile on that head. Well, you're live. Introduce yourself, Oliver. This is your fucking podcast. How many people are watching? How many people are watching? Thousands. What's up, Candy? Hey, Candy's Oliver, good. can you hear me? Oliver can't hear you, no. No, not at all? No. So sh should I call him? Yeah, you should phone him. I say phone yeah, him. See, see, and then he answers his fucking phone. Yeah, we'll see. You know, I tell you something, we always have to have that brother, eh, Malcolm? Yeah. That one brother. <laughs> right? That one brother. Yeah. That's what makes our family so fucking interesting. Nobody understands about the biological global society. Oh, yeah. We're all a different book with a different cover. Hey, Oliver. Yeah. Oliver. Yeah. You know those girls should have masks on their mouths, and you should have a mask on, too. Unbelievable. It's a good thing we're talking about scratchers today because we're showing oh. exactly what not to do, and you're the perfect example. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, and I'd, I'd walk into a tattoo shop after I just got tested and hang out with a guy like Oliver and fucking go back to work and spread the disease a thousand times. Hey, yo. Ollie, you gotta okay, I got to come up to Terrace. Yeah, that's true. That's true. No, it's okay. We're good. Okay, anyways, Malcolm, let's yeah, me and you start. Okay, sounds good. Let's do our thing. <coughs> Maybe we'll eliminate him. <laughs> Everybody knows this bury, bury the needle. Yeah. Uh, we talk about tattoos, uh, tattoo shops. What's going on in the direction of the tattoo world? Uh, like you guys always know, I always talk about how things change with these iPads and no more fucking drawing tables and the blah, 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 blah. But, you yeah. know, there, this is a show that was created by who, Malcolm? <clears throat> uh, me. And Malcolm, of course, you guys all understand, has a multiple, um, his, open up uh, his, uh, his, uh, his, um, Access a podcast has a variety of podcast shows, and one of them is this one here called Bury right. the Needle. You head over to uh, fthisnetwork.com, and uh, you'll see that we got, we're up to, I think we're up to 11 podcasts now. A new one is starting next week, and then another one, another new one starting the week after that. And this is the perfect way to stay communicated or be involved in uh, something to keep your mind busy during this pandemic um you yeah. know guests are brought on if you have any questions jump on our questions jump on the live we'll bring you on uh be part of it it's um the other the podcasts are 
what do you think, uh, Malcolm? One on every second day or every – when are they on? Because I know this one here is on every two weeks. Every 14 yeah. days we have the Bury the Needle and we have the open mic that involves the Battle Axe Global Art Society. Yeah, we got the – we got those two podcasts every two weeks, and then an alternating two weeks on Fridays, we got uh, DJ Johnny Blaze with his podcast, Blaze Plays, where he, yep. he plays a nonstop mix of all different kinds of tunes, which he, he goes live on Twitch Fridays and Saturdays, right? Yes, he does, 9, nine. o'clock to 11. He was on last night. Yeah. Um, like I said, so basically, Johnny Blaze is, uh, is a global member of the Battle Ask Global Art Society. Um He's a member down in uh, Rose City, Oregon. He's actually uh, also the gold controller, meaning he helps the communication among all the divisions that we have along the West Coast. Yeah. Um, you know, Battle Axe is um, located worldwide, Asia, Europe, Australia, Canada, and the USA. And um, Johnny Blaze is one of the controllers along with, of course, we have uh, – Colorado Hayes, and then we have Micah, Simo, myself, and Gino, who run Canada, um, also uh, Scott Bowden in Australia, Willie in Asia, and Zed in Europe. And of course, we have Vice President Trilo and Ashley out of Nevada, who also, you know, help organize and keep this family moving in the right direction. But like I said, communication is a big thing right now. So, right. So, Malcolm, we're going to talk about scratchers today. Um, I don't think the world understands or the young kids should understand more about this situation called scratches because this, this tattoo industry is becoming part of, or it is part of the fashion world now. Okay. Yeah. I mean, when I was 19 and I walked into a shop I mean, you had to have a reason or know somebody, right? You just didn't walk into a shop to get tattooed. It was a little bit intimidating. Nowadays, doors are open. Um, tattoo artists are available. But it don't matter if they have a shop, check out their work. Follow them on their socials. The work should all be consistent. I remember uh, one time when I had a, an artist come to my shop for an interview to get a job. And we gave her the job due to she knew a friend, a person. So we gave the job. But throughout the, the process, you know, the, into the first few days, um, you know, I always keep an eye on them, how they approach clients, how they, you know, react with clients and how they take care of their boxes, how they clean is the number one fucking thing on my shop. Clean. You don't right. clean, you're out of here. I don't give a fuck who you are. Get the fuck out of here. So basically, I check all that stuff out and something didn't jive, but I was looking at her book. Excuse me. Yeah, you know it's a female. Okay. Anyway, so and the work was consistent, but we flipped the page and there's this fucking dragon. And I'm looking at this fucking dragon. I'm like, this dragon don't fit this portfolio because it's a different style. That's what you guys understand. Pay attention to these portfolios. Look at the way the lines are, the shading is. Make sure it's not blotchy. I mean, we're going to talk more about this stuff in future episodes about line work and blotchiness and shading and everything, especially when it comes to color. I mean, the grays, yeah, you can wash it and everything, but, you know, it's another big thing. The effects, which way the angle should be from and everything, you know? The right. one-third. You know, there's a lot of information out there that some of these fucking artists don't even know and don't understand. They'll say, what are you talking about, right? Because they basically went to Google. They basically bought themselves a machine. That they call a it gun. It's not a fucking gun. It's a machine. Uh, right. You know, and set it up. Who knows if they went the wrong way. Nowadays, with the coil machines, all you do is click the needle in. There is no depth ratio. It's how you hold it, how you turn it, how you make your circles and pull your lines. Right. Um, makes it less, how you say it, less scarring. Um, you can still scar the fucking body if you don't know how to put the ink in. But like I said, this process is less scarring because with the coil machine, you're setting the needle in and the depth, you can kind of play with it a little more deeper, a little bit less depth, right? But still, you got a lot of kids out there that pick up machines. And the thing is, though, the reason they do this is because there are no apprenticeship programs available because artists and shops have no time. Right. I don't tattoo. You know, Malcolm, I own my shop. My brother and I have owned shops for over 20 years. We're, we're collectors. Uh, I just added another artist to my collection on my canvas. I'm at 81 artists who tattooed my canvas, my body. Um, <clears throat> so I've met 81 different artists, have 81 different styles on my, on, my, on my canvas. And at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying, learning more and more about the industry and how everybody is different, right? 
Right. But when it comes down to it, there is no apprenticeship program. I, like I said, I'm not an, I'm not an artist because I got to pay attention to the shop. I got to pay attention to the clients. I got to pay attention to the tattoos. Make sure everything's on the right way. Young kids that come in and they want these fucking ideas. You know, these fucking young kids are the toughest ones to deal with because over at my shop, uh, there, there really is no um, age limit. I would say over here in Canada. Uh, right. Who is really fucking monitoring? They don't even monitor the fucking shops. You'd be going around and monitoring all these people that put ads on crazy and say, I'll tattoo you for $60. Come right, to my right. house. Come to my house. Come to my apartment. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? You don't go to someone's <laughs> house to get tattooed. You know, unless it's like a, a person of, of um, maturity in this business. You know, they're tattooing for 10, 15 fucking years. And they're tired of it, especially right now what's going on with this COVID thing. Yeah. Why would a person who has a clientele list tattoo out of a shop and they got to pay rent and everything with they just build a beautiful studio in a separate room away from everything else in the house where it's just your studio, you know what I'm saying? As your studio kept cleaning everything else, only your studio, nobody else goes in there, your dog and cat in the house. It's your studio for tattooing clients. You know what I'm saying? There should be no reason why you can't do that. But the problem is when you walk into someone's house and they're, they're tattooing you off the fucking kitchen table, you know, the living room fucking uh, uh, table. I mean, come on. Think about it, okay? It doesn't matter if it's a piece of saran wrap, okay? That the saran wrap that's laying down is not it's protecting the fucking the table. It's not protecting you. Right. So people got to understand that. And what I say about scratchers is, I mean, I got a lot of kids that come in the shop that be tattooed by this, what's it called? The pinning stuff. They fucking pin themselves in, uh, I don't know what the fuck they call it. It was something stupid where they're, Take a cigarette ashes and then they're sit there uh, stick and poke, stick and poke. That's what right. it's called. Okay. And there's okay. actually an artist that does stick and poke in Vancouver, does amazing work. But she's doing it with the tattoo needles. She's doing it in a sterile environment. You know, she's doing it as an art. Right. Not let's right. do some fucking lines, let's drink some booze, and let's start tattooing each other. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. A lot of kids do that, and I tell the kids, when you do that, you wake up in the morning, just grab some rubbing alcohol. Fucking 99.9% .9 rubbing alcohol to rub it on there. And keep rubbing it on there throughout the day, every once in a while. And that tattoo, the ink will disappear. Um, I learned that when I had my fucking child pass away. I lost a kid 10 years ago, and I had this hand tattoo put on there. Remember him? Well, it was back then. I had a gym, too, so we're doing the way at the Purell, all the sanitizer before this fucking this pandemic came around. My gym, I had... You know, cleansiness and everything always. But anyways, I didn't know this, but I was making the tattoo disappear because of the Purell. So Purell's alcohol. I had to get this tattoo done three times, right? It's a tough thing when you do a tattoo in your hand. Right. You know, I guarantee you, I would say probably 75% of the artists don't know how to tattoo hands, right? They go in there, I guarantee you. 75% of artists don't know how to tattoo hands. I guarantee you that those same 75 don't know how to tattoo fingers. Uh, there's always out there people. And then these are the things that clients need to understand. You know, when you're getting your hands tattooed or getting your arm tattooed, your chest tattooed, your ribs tattooed, your stomach tattooed, you should deal with artists that have tattooed this area because everything's different. Yeah. I mean, Malcolm, you got your stomach tattooed? Me, no. <laughs> no. I've heard about uh, it. Oh, that was my experience in Maui. I went out there. I had my fucking name put across my stomach. I tell you, when the guy put the needle in, the next five hours were fucking living hell, man. Ooh, man. Oh, fucking living hell. You know, there's no numbing cream. We got a lot of numbing cream nowadays that are available for the tattoos. Some artists don't want to use it because they feel it dilutes the ink, which is bullshit. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, they wouldn't allow a cream that's made for tattooing to dilute your ink whatever the redness or whatever stuff like that i've tried the stuff out so i can at least tell my clients that it is you know it works um you know i like i said i'm on 81 artists and you know we have 81 tattoos i mean fucking i'm getting too old for this fucking this pain behind my fucking now i'm down to the parts of my body and you guys should understand where it's a lot of sensitive areas okay so it's the inside of the thighs the, the back of the, my ass um you know what I'm saying? These are the areas i got left over here. They're, they're all sensitive areas. And, you know, right. I don't want to be sitting there fucking moving around. It makes it easier for the artist, too, because you're not moving around. You're not twitchy. As long as you sit there and not move, it, 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 the piece comes out so much nicer. So it's it's good for the artist. It's good for the client. Um, you know, everybody always says, oh, you should be, you should feel your tattoos. Oh, we're not in the fucking 90s, man. This is a whole new world. Fuck. If you have an opportunity to use a, 
good fucking um, numbing cream, do it. Just make sure you understand it's a good cream, something that's recognized, not something that was made in someone's bathroom, because it will fuck up the color, right? It, it matters. These things are made the right way, the right recipes. Right. But anyhow, so like I said, the apprenticeship program outcome is not offered too much. We have one here at the shop, and it's a lot of work. Our entertainment. Thank God they're leaving. Um, but anyways, at the end of the day, when it comes to the apprenticeship program, you know, the, the rights, the wrongs, the most important part of my program when I teach it, it, it is, um, you know, cleansiness, sterilization, cross-contamination, blood pathogens. That's the very first, you know, 90 days uh, of uh, the program and could, because it's the most important thing. Uh, last thing you want to do is to infect uh, your client because I can see a report coming back and uh, nowadays with social media, you're dead. You're, you're, you're dead. You're finished. Right. You know, that's right. always try to say, that's what I always try to say to, um, you know, to these new artists, you know, you become a tattoo artist, don't become an idiot, right? Stay humble, stay loyal, you know, to your, to your art form, treat your clients with respect. Um, they're the most important, they're the most important thing on, the, on your career, right? They can ruin you. Right? But anyway, so always do your Thank homework you. on, do your homework on, your artists, look at their portfolios. And if it doesn't feel right in the stomach, you know, fuck. And I always tell everybody, you know, Malcolm, that just because I own a shop, it doesn't mean everybody gets tattooed at my shop. I got people that come to my shop where I, sh I send them off to other shops because there's a certain style they're looking for. And, you know, we're carrying seven different artists. But, you know, at the end of the day, we might not have that, that style that they're looking for. And, you know, being in this business now, 20 plus years, I met a lot of good artists, a lot of good artists that I would actually, you know, sit there and give them business. But I've also met a lot of fucking big headed artists, you know, I like to give them a fucking pop in the nose, but they're more mature yeah. than me. And I just show my fucking, I understand their respect and everything. But like I said, also there's new artists where some of them learn the right way and some of them are learning the wrong way. And I tell you something in this industry, um, now with the pandemic and everything, I open doors to my new artists, to, to conventions. And first year in, I bring them down, but not this, not no more. It's not going to happen. You're going to have to have five to six years minimum tattooing in a shop. You know, right. I got my convention coming back next year, and that's that's going to be the protocol, right? I'm not going to deal with kids that think they know. I want people that know. So I got a question well, about yeah. the uh, tattoo industry. Is, uh, like, proper... Uh, organized apprenticeships, something that they would be accepting towards? The apprenticeship programs back in the day, Malcolm, were where you hung out. Um, you did have a fee, but you had a lot of labor. Basically, you hung out. You just hung out. I mean, you hung out, you clean the shop, uh, go get coffee, food, uh, walk, clean the washrooms, watched, 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 watched. Uh, you know, and then when you're hanging out for probably about a year, Maybe I'm not too sure because, you know, the, the when I had the opportunity of getting the prices, in, it's basically a program of twelve months. You're paying me this much money, yeah. so you're gonna do the first three months. If I see that you understand the sterilization part, then I'll good. move you to the fucking the last nine months. If not, I just tell you to fucking leave. Don't waste know, my time. Good, don't waste your time. And don't waste no more of your money. But when it comes down to the shops, shops need to be clean. Um, I can right. drop my phone. Yeah. But anyways, like I said, Malcolm, the best thing nowadays is you guys just prevent these scratchers, make sure you see their portfolio, make sure you see their work. Yeah. If any tattoo is charging you anything under $100 an hour, well, then you're getting, you don't have a good artist. I'm telling you right now. Don't waste your time. No yeah. artist is, is reputable is under $100 an hour, uh, even if they're working out of their houses. It's, 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 not, it's not, it doesn't exist. So, like I said, if you want a good artist, you're going to pay anywhere between 150 to 200 to maybe $230 an hour. Matters yeah. what you want. And the thing is, you, know, you remember people that behind these artists, there's a lot of work to be done. They're the ones sitting there, you know, working on you. And if, like I said, if you don't use a numbing cream, you're fucking twitchy. And they got to work with you. And they got to draw your thing out. They got to draw your piece out. You know, they got to place your piece. You got to sterilize the air. There's a lot of work behind your tattoo. And yeah. these tattoo artists, I tell you something, man. I mean, I tried tattooing a few people myself. No, I, no, no. 
because I don't got the patience. I'd rather be part of your tattoo and conversation placement idea, you know, making sure the shop's clean and everything. Let the artists do their work here. That's what they do here. They don't deal with clients. We right, do right. all the clients. We find the right client for them. Then we push them over. But like I said, you know what I'm saying? No person is under 100 bucks an hour. And if they are, they're just looking for fucking free money or free canvas. Right. right? So you can't be a you... guinea pig if you want. There's a lot of artists out there that want guinea pigs. Well, when they finish our program here after 12 months, they tattoo themselves. Then what I do is I know they can tattoo, but we ask clients to, you know, to come either get tattoos for a certain rate or a lower price by the hour. And these artists do that for the next 18 months. After 18 months, they move up to the regular price. But they're doing 18 months of tattooing. Right. right? Yeah, yeah. So Willie P asked, uh, what made you decide to start a tattoo shop? Well, the whole culture of it. Um, you know, like my whole, my whole, my whole, how you say it, man, the things I like, I like muscle cars. I love Harleys. I love the whole culture of the Harley Davidson and the clubs. Yeah. I also love music. Um, I love all sorts of arts that we have involved with battle ass graffiti, even down to business promoters, you know, and you got the editors and you got also the super bikes and everything and guys doing snowboarding and fighting and, you know, so I'm into all that kind of stuff. Uh, anything, you know, that's just creative. But like I said, at the end of the day for tattooing, when I got my first tattoo, I was 19. You know, because over here, you're a legal fucking adult. You leave your house there. And plus, I had European parents. I respected my parents. Right. But now being 49, 30 fucking years later, 81 artists on my, my canvas, I find the, the, whole, the whole culture is great. The people are great. Um, it has changed. It has changed. Um, yeah. Am I getting tired of it? Who knows? You know, the whole aspect. And the thing is, though, I, I always have a breakfast with uh, an old school guy, John Dutchman, um, over here in uh, British Columbia. And I tell you something, he's been around the world. And it's hard because he's, always, he's got his standards are way up here. And I try to say, John, uh, you can't have those standards no more. It doesn't work. And him having a shop of his own with, you know, six spots, closed private rooms, Right. To offer to artists where he won't because he just ain't got those standards. So, well, I think nowadays you got to understand, and sometimes it's about the money. I'm not saying that my standards are lower, but these guys are old school. Right. Okay. The work they do, I mean, the 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 the, the, the drawing of it, how it is, the angle, the whole nine yards. This is what he's all about. This is true tattoo, true art. But now people just say, "I want that rose." Slap it on tattoo. There you go. There's your rose, right? If John right. was going to do the rolls, he'd do the rolls with a certain angle, with a certain pedal. Like he'd create the fucking thing for you. Now it's like stick and paste, right? But like I said, we got to sit here and understand that, you know, it ain't cheap renting these places. It ain't cheap supplying the supplies for these artists because, you know, we do a percentage. We offer everything but paint needles. But if right. we do you know, a rental, then they take care of their own shit, right? But getting into this fucking uh, in this culture was something I enjoy. And like I said, it took me 40 years to get to it. No, actually 37. I had my own gym. I had my own construction company, my landscaping company. I've had a fucking gallery. Fuck, man, I've done it all. I've done it all. I totally have done it all, you know. And then when it comes down to hobbies, and everything, like I said, I've ridden with the best fucking motorcycle clubs in the world. I've hung out with the best street fucking in the city. Uh, you know what? And I just wanted to create my own fucking thing, and that's where the Battle Last Global Society came around. Where we're just positive artists, doing good for ourselves, our communities. I want my kids to be on my team, okay? Because the other, the other side is a great side, but seriously, our kids need to be put in a positive path. Right. Because the other path ain't going nowhere. I mean, it could, it could be. There's, remember something? Everybody's got a purpose, right? Eighty percent of these kids don't have to have that purpose. You know, they can actually help create this world to make it a better place. I say they're not a better place. Trust me. Fucking loved it. Loved it. Loved it. But it's changed a lot. Okay. It's changed. All is is fucking goddamn, you know, you can't travel. You can't do this. You can't do that. Yeah. God bless Canada, I tell you. <laughs> so getting back to the topic of scratchers, what are there like certain repercussions to getting caught, you know, running a shop out of your home or? No, that's the problem. Just frowned upon, huh? Well, you're frowned upon. I mean, you can get the health inspectors called on you, right? It's not going to stop you from tattooing, 
Right. They, they know your address. They know where you live. You know, they could put a blemish on you, but is there really a fine? No. And that's what there should be. Right. So what we're talking about, you know, Malcolm, it's good to you, Bob, because what we're talking about, myself and John, um, the Dutchman there, when during the, uh, the pandemic is there should be a website for every province, every state. When an artist goes and gets his license from their city, yeah. their name goes on that website. And you know that that artist is a recognized artist, an insured, licensed artist. Right. Then you go off that list, and that way you can start having less shops because more of these people need to be recognized. And the thing is, the only way they're going to get recognized if they go to the city, get a license, which is not a big deal. But you now you know where they're at. Now you know the health board can go along and walk around, check them all out, check the spots out and everything, right? Check where they're at. You have an address. Right, right. I have a license without an address, right? So it would be a better process. I mean, like I said, at the end of the day, I mean, the tattoo industry has fucking changed. Yeah. Big time. Big time. Yeah. Big time. Now, if, if, if a scratcher is doing some tattoo, he's doing tattooing out of his, his basement, let's say. Yeah. And he's he's trying to follow all the necessary safety precautions, right? Yeah. Uh, but somebody, one of his clients contracts, I don't know, let's say they contract HIV or something. Yeah. What will what, happen then, is it? Well, see, if that okay, happens... Let's, let's, let's do it this way, Rocco, before you answer. Let's say the repercussions for a scratcher versus a licensed professional tattoo artist with his own shop and everything that's, like, legit. Okay, so if if it's if it's um, proven that your shop or you the person scratching in your basement has passed on this disease to the person, yeah, the personal guy will have probably personal lawsuits. The shop, the insurance will cover it. See, my shop's insured for two million dollars. Right now, the thing is this: so about insurance, people have to understand. I'm pretty sure I don't have to explain, but most most people don't understand how insurance works. They don't want to pay. Right. They rather spend more money proving that you're fucking wrong, because if you're right, the next person has the same problem as you. Why did they get paid? So they have to always prove that you're fucking wrong. So this way, if everybody goes, oh no, don't forget about it, because they never paid with HIV or something. So you gotta make sure your 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 um your evidence is strong, right? Right. And with, with the shop here, like I said, my my artists are insured two million dollars. And the thing over here is we're so precautious. Your waiver tells you everything. Remember, some people do have medical reports and all that. You go to their doctor and say, do they ever have any issues with HIV or sexually transmitted diseases? Are they whores? You know what I'm saying? So right. once you do all that homework, you see, yeah, your guy picks up fucking pills for syphilis every two weeks. Well, you know what? You had it yourself, bro. Now I'm going to sue you because I might have it now. Right. But. One good thing about this pandemic, I explained to my, my artist, so Malcolm, is the masks should always be mandatory. The glasses should always be mandatory. The gloves, of course, are always wearing gloves. But through this process, everybody's wearing the, the gloves, and, I mean, uh, the masks. Yeah. But it will be a mandatory thing at every shop. And like I said, I'm, I'm moving forward in my shop telling my artist it's mandatory because if you don't wear it and you try to put a WCB claim, a workers' compensation claim or something, they're going to come and tell me, what well, these guys never wore their masks. These guys never wear their glasses. I'm not going to lie to my insurance company. I can't lie for you. But I do deal with this stuff in my meetings. We have a meeting once every two months here at the shop. We go over everything. Safety is a big thing on my meetings. I tell them straight on, tell them stories about, you know, just put the glasses on, see the spots on your lens. Those will be in your eyes. And just imagine what you're breathing in when you're tattooing this person two, two inches away from him, right? Right, right, right. Don't think about that, right? And plus, you got to remember something. It goes into your skin. Yeah. So we have plastic sleeves, too. Right? Those, I have everything available here. Right. If they use it, they use it. If they don't use it, that's what can I say. I'm not going to babysit them, but I tell them all the time. That's, that's, a, that's a matter of, like, uh, personal preference, I guess, also, like... Um... If an artist is wearing those sleeves, then maybe it kind of hinders their mobility or, you know, like their comfort level while they're tattooing, right? I guess. Yeah, no, exactly, right? Yeah. But uh, like I said, at the end of the day, Malcolm, is like, um, is like I offer it to the clients. Yeah. It, I mean, to the artist. It's there. Everything. And, of course, everybody knows about my shop. The first thing about my shop is always cleansing and sterilization. I'm big on it, you know. 
If I have an off day, fuck, I must have been sleeping. But with the staff here and everything, it's the most important thing about a shop. I tell people, look around the shop when you walk in there. Look in the corners. Look at the mirrors. Look in the washrooms. The washrooms are clean, then don't worry about it. The washrooms are clean, then the shop's going to be clean. Right? Yeah. That's the important thing. Right? right. You know, you don't see any dust settled on anything, right? It's all, everything's always top notch. Spots on yeah. mirrors, spots on sinks, toilets that fucking have full garbage cans. You know, everything should be crystal clear. I mean, you come to my bathrooms, I got Listerine in there. Uh, spray when you fucking go to the washroom and you stake the place up. I mean, extra rolls of toilet paper. You know, we try at Purell. Also, the instructions, wash your fucking hands. Yeah. And the thing is, though, that the door is not there, but it's there. So when someone does go to the washroom, I always look over and see if they're wiping their hands or something. Because I'll say, to them, you wash your hands? Right? Yeah. I'll be like I do with my kids all the time when they come along. You wash your hands? You're in my shop. Go back there. Wash your fucking hands, right? Right, right. Well, Malcolm, I tell you something. It's because this pandemic's been around. It's almost one year come March. That's right. And people, people are getting comfortable. They think it's all with the big deal. I'm not going to get the, 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 the. the numbers are fucking going up. Okay. I don't know who the fuck you're trying to fool. Ontario shut down. Yeah. Quebec is shut down. Alberta is just barely breathing. Okay. I tell my fucking artists here, we're going to be next if we go smart in the fuck up. You know? Yeah. Yeah. There was a point uh, during the beginning of this whole thing where BC was almost like a shining example of. Being yeah. Safe, right. He was the quan, you know? And I tell you something right now that. Little lady, um, what's her name? The lady that's helping with the, the, the health thing there. What's her fucking name? Oh, gosh. I forgot. Is there anybody out there in Beaverland know that name of the lady, the, the doctor, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> Pathetic, man. <laughs> Anyways, we got so much stuff. Anyways, so they give the, the ad they have. We should have more nerds. And she's the nerd in there. But she, she is doing a good job. You know, I hear nowadays she's getting threatened, uh, you know, stuff like that. And, and, you know, she's walking around bodyguards. Well, what do you need? Right. Like, he did. She was up there. When this pandemic first started, man, I tell you something. Like, those weren't fake tears that she was crying. Okay? She was fucking heartbroken because people were fucking dying. Yeah. And her job is to help us. And we, and we did a great job. But, like, the thing is, it's not her fault. It's my fault. Your fault. Your fault. Your fault. Because you're not obeying the fucking rules, Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Malcolm, I, I have my office here at my shop, okay? So I do office work here. I also have an office at home. So I do my work there. That's it, brother. That's all I do since this pandemic. I'm in this shop by myself downstairs. You know, if I go up to talk to people, I got my mask on. I stay right. away from the top floor, you know, until it's like one or two people up there. Uh, and then I go up the back door. I go home. And I hang out with my fucking family over there. When I get home, I shower. Yeah. You know, or, you know, and then after I got my gym there, I got my pool, I got everything in my house. So, I mean, it makes it a little bit easier to stay at home. Now it's winter time. I go down to the ports, I work, I work on machines by myself. Yeah. Like I said, we, this is what I've done. I've zeroed out my, my, um, hanging out with people. But, you know, like I say today, now my, my ads, we have to communicate though. And this is one way of communicating with people. We got yeah. people online asking us questions. They're welcome to jump online. We have this fucking bury the meal. But remember yeah. something, this, this show's all about tattoos, tattoo shops, and everything else. It's not about, you know, and I'm just filling everybody in a little bit of stuff here and there. Yeah, yeah. That's true. Okay, so somebody in the chat said Henry, Dr. Henry. That's right. That's, that's her name. Bonnie Henry. There you go, yeah. Hey, right, fuck. Oh, well, sorry about that. We haven't uh, smoked enough today. Today's <laughs> Sunday, the Lord's Day. That's right. Everybody should be fucking doing something that they enjoy. It's not going to kill them. And take the moment once in a while and do a little sign of the cross and pray to the Lord, God, Mother Mary, and all the fucking saints. And thank them. Right. Anyhow, how's uh, Oliver doing there, him and his clientes? Oh, it seems to be coming along nicely. We had, to, yeah. we had the ink cam up there, but he shut it down. So, yeah. Well, there he is. He's just selfish like he usually is, right? Because if those girls see if those girls seen us, they wouldn't be with him. You know what I'm saying, bro? I'm sorry to say. Oliver. <laughs> redhead stepchild. <laughs> oh, he said, he said he cock blocked him. That's why he shut the camera off. Cock blocked them. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Ollie, I see you're wearing cologne today, buddy. Huh? Guys all groomed well and everything. Hey, <laughs> Oh, yeah. He's all groomed up, ready to fucking ballet with the women. Yeah. 
We love you, Oliver. But don't right. worry about it. We took, we took care of the show for you today, Oliver. That's right. We took care of your podcast for you today. Don't worry about no it. No problem, bro. <laughs> no, you know, man. You. Bury the, the needle, 330. Axe is up, five. Hey, Malcolm. Yo, yo. The power of the pussy, eh? <laughs> Tell you guys. <laughs> it's the most dangerous thing out there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, the tattoo looks fantastic, though. You did a fantastic job. Good well, we should get that zoomed in at least. Let's finish yeah, hey, the tattoo. Can we get? Can we? Let's show. Let's show. Can we show the viewers what you just did for this lovely lady? Hey. The least you can do, Oliver. All right, I'll put the ink cam on again. We'll see if uh, they're cool with it. Do 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 do. Okay. <laughs> Mom, give me on there twice. Hey. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, you can come around here. At least you got a That's a good sign. Come a little closer. Oh, <laughs> wow. Look at that, eh? <laughs> that was all today? That was all today? All, all today. today. All today. <coughs> How many hours? Four. 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 Wow. She's a trooper. She looks Can like a trooper. One too? From Oliver, too? No, no from, from somebody else. You can tell the crafty outline. You understand stand like that for about five minutes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Thanks, sweetheart. Hey, great Malcolm. Yep. Uh, Malcolm, you're fucking, you, you, you do great filming, brother. You know how to work that camera, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Malk, let's cut her down. We got the open mic at 5 p.m. Sounds good, brother. Thank you very much for bringing me on. I love this show, brother. I want to participate as much as I can. Um, yeah, thank you for having you always, man. It's, it's thank you very much, brother. Man. I mean, this, the tattoo industry is huge. It's big. It's a part of the fashion world. Our kids are getting tattooed. They need to have the education. People need to be educated. Artists need to be fucking educated too sometimes. Now, before he cut out, Billy Billy in the chat said Dick can be just as dangerous. <laughs> yeah, okay there, Billy. That's Billy's fucking response, okay? The power of the pussy, baby. That's the power. <laughs> I love you, Billy. You know that. Uh, oh, perv. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Malcolm. See you at 5 p.m., brother. You got it, brother. Thanks for dropping right. in. Axes up, always. Up high. Got it. All right. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in for this episode of Bury the Needle. Uh, you got to see some tattooing in action. Fantastic job. These people got character here. It's funny. We're enjoying ourselves. Um, tune in in a couple of weeks. Same time, same place. Whoa. And this is Malcolm for Bury the Needle. See you at five for Axes Up. It's F this. Fuck this.